I look at a piece and go, oh, what about the eyes? So I really look at figurative art from an eye perspective. Even if a piece of art does not have any eyes, mm -hmm. or a painting has no eyes, mm -hmm. I imagine what they would be like. So everything I really have in my collection that's figurative starts with the eyes. You can almost imagine anything you want. Yeah. You can, you can just imagine anything you want. You can imagine that that person is sad, you can imagine that they're really happy, or they just don't wanna say anything. I just wanna be, be quiet. it's okay to be quiet. And yes, I am looking at you, and you're looking back at me, and the expression is odd because I pass through this room a lot. It, of course, doesn't change. It's a figurative piece of art, but my moods change. So sometimes I look at it and I go, ooh, I don't want to look at you today. And I move on to something else. Because that expression never changes. Right. It's how I feel about it that changes, yeah. I think. And that, that's part of, I guess, living with art. When I started out, I wasn't financially where I am now. So you, you have to go back to that control, how much you're spending kind of thing. Because you know, if you have unlimited resources and money, well, the sky's the limit. So I have evolved. Um, I collect now, I don't look at, you know, sometimes I look at the price, I go, okay, well, I want that. And ooh, what does that cost? And if I want it, I just get it. As opposed to early on in my career, in my life, I would go, turn the price tag, how much is this? I don't care if I like it or not, how much does it cost? So I've arrived at a point in my life now, fortunately enough, that I can buy things just based on sight. I see something, I go, oh, I have to have that. And then I ask cost and I go, I may choke a little bit, but it's like, if I want it, I just get it. And each piece that I've acquired makes me feel a certain way. That's how I knew that I was attracted to the art and I could live with it. If I brought another piece in, for example, I would love it as much as I do the pieces that are already there, so it's hard to rotate. If someone told me right now I had to take one piece of my art and run out of the door, but you can only take one piece and ask no questions, I would say my runners. Mm -hmm. And only because of the sentimental value that goes along with it. But I like other pieces equally as much, but if I had to take one piece for sentimental reasons, it would be the runners. And I would grab it and run. <laughs> It's one thing to read in theory, it's another thing to be around people who are doing it the same thing you're doing and you don't make the same pitfalls that they did because they can tell you certain things or direct you in places where there's gonna be art. It's like, there's art, let's go. Who did the Billie Holiday and the dance? Um, Zarep, he's one of my little brothers. <laughs> he did the dancers, he did Billie Holiday, he's very diverse. And he also did the, the one behind me, but he did the Billie Holiday. My mother passed away about 11 years ago, and he started painting a lot of stuff. He just started painting. And I went by his house once, and I said, um, what is in your, this room? Let me see what you got in here. And he had all this stuff rolled up. And he was painting away his grief. It was, it's like he just started to paint. And I said, this is interesting. I said, well, I want some of this stuff. And he said, which one? I said, what about the Billie Holiday? And he said, okay. I said, why Billie Holiday though? Because believe it or not, he's a minister. <laughs> and I said, well, why Billie Holiday? He said, because she sings the blues, even though I don't listen to the blues. I started listening to some of the stuff she was saying and she was in a lot of pain and I wanted to paint it out. I said, very interesting. So yeah. I started buying his stuff and getting a lot of stuff from him at that point. I made an assumption that I was like on an island by myself and I had an issue because I would always go out and find something and go, oh, I've got to have that. And I'm thinking, I know people collect this stuff, but are there other people like me that collect it? And when I started being around to ask for rhythms, I said, there are people who are just like I am. I go to some of the members' homes and, and I'm like, they are just like I am. So. It gave me a sense of a place that I could belong to. There's a place. It's like saying there's this place that you'll actually fit in. And I could talk about art with like you, and you would understand what I was talking about if I say, oh, I saw this yesterday and I'm, I cannot sleep, I've gotta have it. As opposed to being around people, because a lot of my friends who don't collect, they would go, okay. The impact would be different. So yes, so I found a place that I could call home a place that I could go, guess what, these people are similar to 
me and they kind of like the same things I like. And it just makes a difference, especially now in my life, you know. If I come home from a trip <laughs> and I've been gone all week, I'll literally turn on some music, turn on the overhead lights, and look at my collection or look at my artwork and sit and think to myself, whatever's happened out there, I can come in here and totally relax, just totally relax in my environment. And once again, a lot of stuff happens out there, but when I come home, it's not like a hotel, it's not like being on the road, it's not like being someplace else, it's my home. And each piece, depending on where I, how I wanna feel that night, is where I'll go. Okay. That's what happens to me. If I come in here, I wanna just, okay, let me deflate it and not think. If I go back there, I'm ready to go to sleep, but I can still wake up or look up and there's some art on the wall and go, yes, it's nice. <laughs>